This is a quick video to look at some of the analysis of a standard addition curve and how to do some of the statistics that we need to do in, uh, uh, in class. So in the upper right hand corner here, we have a standard addition curve. This was similar to um, the analysis of iron and we added subsequent amounts of a standard in uh, a standard concentration, we got a decent calibration curve or a standard curve, and now we need to figure out not only what the concentration of our uh, original uh, uh, analyte solution was. Uh, this was, remember, the mass of uh, mass of iron uh, in a tablet in a supplement. But we also want to find out the uncertainty, and we're going to get that uncertainty. Uh, from the error in the S intercept or the uh, uh, the intercept from our uh, the uncertainty of our X intercept. So to do that, in the upper left hand corner, we've got a our uh, our original data, so the concentrations and the absorbances. And then I also have the results from the line ST analysis, which gives us not only the slope, and the intercept, but it also gives us uh, the errors in the slopes and the intercepts, which we don't use today, but we do use this SY value uh, that, uh, and you'll see that, uh, you'll see that shortly. So first and foremost, we need to get the x-intercept because the x-intercept is the concentration of the unknown solution that we analyzed, and it's actually the absolute value of the x-intercept. So this is equal to B over M. Next, what we want to, uh, uh, to do, uh, if you remember, we call this solution C. And s the next thing that we need to do is use this, uh, use this S-intercept equation and fill in the various bits of information. I find it's perhaps easiest to break it up into some smaller components. So I'm going to break it up into those three components there, and so hopefully the math will be, uh, will be pretty straightforward. We first need to calculate SY over M, and SY is the value that we hit, got from line ST, and M is the slope. So here we are. Next, we need 1 over n, which is the number of samples that are in the analysis, and I count five spots. So I'm just going to type in 1 over 5 for this, just to keep it simple. And the rest of that needs to be, uh, needs to be calculated. Uh, let's go ahead first and create a couple, uh, a, a couple new uh, pieces, of, uh, pieces of data. Um, we want the average x values. We see that there's an x bar there. We got that. And then we need the average y values. And we've got that. OK. So we've got the y bar and the x bar that are in the equation. So we should be able to, uh, the one last thing that we are missing is this this term here. And I suspect folks are having some problems with that. Uh, this is the sum of the squares of the differences between each one of the x values and the average of the x values. Now, it turns out that there is an equation, or there's a function in Excel that allows us to do that. So it's called sum, sum squares. So if we type in sum square and we highlight the five values that we want, so these would be each of our individual xi's, and we subtract from that the, um, the average, and we get, uh, uh, we get our, our value. So sum of squares, in my particular case, if you're following along, the array of x values minus wherever the average value is. So now we've got all of the components that we need to create the rest of this that's under the square root. So we would say the, uh, this is equal to the average y squared divided by, make sure we have parentheses, the slope squared times 
that sum of squares value that we just uh, we just calculated. There we are. And now we can uh, we have all the three pieces to put together the uh, the error in the intercept. Uh, this is going to equal that value times the square root of that value plus that value. Okay, and we see that this number is um, is is small uh, relative to the uh, uh, the x intercept. So um, I have a I can use a gut uh, gut feeling approach to see if my uh, if my number is right. Uh, by looking at what this actually means. The, if the, it means that the x-intercept is 7.9 plus or minus 0.4, right? We've got the 7.9 right there. The 0 0.4 is, uh, is, is right there. Oops. It won't let me. There we are. Oh, the 7 point uh, is the, the intercept is, uh, or the error in the intercept is right there. And we can get a, a, a final x-intercept value with its uncertainty of 7.9 plus or minus 0.4 in this particular, uh, this particular case. Now, what's important here is that when we designed this experiment, all of the error in our answer is going to come from the error in our calibration curve. We used high precision glassware, so we can assume that those errors are, um, uh, are, are negligible. So what that means is the relative uncertainty of our x-intercept is going to be the relative uncertainty of our final, uh, uh, our final mass. In order to calculate the relative uncertainty, this is just like a relative standard deviation, we take the uncertainty and we divide by the, uh, the average, and we get that. And we're going to keep that as is. We're not going to multiply it by 100 or anything like that to get a percent. And now we need to, um, uh, we need to do, some, uh, uh, do some math here. And to do that, uh, we need to back calculate some of, our, uh, some of our dilutions. So we need to remember that solution C is uh, is calculated uh, was actually prepared. So this is this is going to be a little bit different because uh, if you haven't done this experiment yet, these numbers may not be uh, the same as uh, as what you're expecting. But we're going to uh, uh, we're going to use uh, uh, use these numbers. So stick with me. We made a final uh, volume of 25 milliliters, but in this experiment, we used 10 milliliters of solution B. To uh, to create solution C, so that means that if we're uh, the concentration of solution C times its volume divided by the volume of solution B should give us the concentration of solution B, and then solution A is uh, was 100 milliliters, and we used five milliliters of solution A to uh, to make solution B. And that then is this number here times that volume divided by the original volume. And we get around 396 for, uh, uh, for this. Lastly, we need to remember that the mass of uh, iron, or so the entire tablet was dissolved in, uh, in 100 milliliters of uh, solution, which is 0.1 liters. So we get to, we take that concentration and we multiply that by the uh, uh, by the volume in liters, and we get 39 uh, 39.6 uh, milligrams. This unit is in uh, uh, milligrams, and we would compare that to our. Uh, our we're going to be comparing that to the value that was on the bottle, uh, which was 37 milligrams. Now we need this error, the the plus or minus for that value. I said that the relative uncertainty in the mass is equal to the relative uncertainty of uh, the x-intercept. So what, that's, uh, uh, what that means, if my drawing is going to work here, uh, if we had the s for the x-intercept divided by the x-intercept is equal to some value, that is going to be equal to the s in iron divided by the, the mass of iron that we've got. So since I've just calculated this value and this value, I multiply those two together to get the, uh, the, the 
uncertainty in my final result. So this is equal to iron times 0 .005, 0 0.05, there we are. And we get an uncertainty of, uh, of plus or minus 2. So if we take these last two numbers, if we take these last two numbers, what we end up getting is 40 plus or minus 2 milligrams of iron in the, uh, uh, in the tablet. And so this is the number that I would use to compare to the, the true value uh, to, or the accepted value using the confidence interval. Uh, I'll just set this up briefly. Remember, the com uh, confidence interval is equal to x bar plus or minus ts over the square root of n. So um, when we rearrange this for uh, finding t, we've got values for u, that's the accepted value. x bar is what we just calculated, 40. Um, or And then square root of n, there are five samples in our calibration curve. S is the standard deviation that we just calculated. Go ahead and use these actual values here. Don't use the rounded off values to calculate your, uh, uh, your t. You use this here to report, but use these for, uh, uh, for calculating the, your t value. Then we're going to compare to the degrees of freedom um, of 3. And so why do we have 3? If we take a look at our uh, calibration curve, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 different uh, points. And then if we look at our intercept here, the s-intercept, we see that we've calculated an average for y and an average for x. Remember, the degrees of freedom is usually calculated from the number of trials minus the number of means. So this degrees of freedom comes from 5 minus 2 to get, uh, to get that number. And there you have it. That's a quick and dirty way for estimating the error or the uncertainty in the mass of your iron tablet.